Hi and welcome. My name is Patrick Stevenson. I'm the Director of Innovation and Healthcare at Fujitsu in the UK and I'm really delighted to be joined here today uh, with Helen, uh, Ellen Deverer. And Helen, you've got a Master's in Physics and you've been working in Fujitsu the last 12 months on our graduate scheme. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been working on some pretty cool projects, yeah? So we're going to talk about those projects in a short while. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about disrupting the drug discovery process. Um, so we've been looking at how drugs come to market and it takes over 12 to 15 years to bring a drug to market. And it can cost over a billion pounds to bring that drug to market with a really, really high failure rate. And looking at that process, there are five big stages to drug discovery and bringing a drug to market. Uh, we start off with discovery, we then move into design, preclinical trials, clinical trials, and then into assurance and testing and bringing that drug to market. So if you think about that process, you know, we've had a really good look at that process, Helen, and uh, I think the challenge I've set the team really is, could we disrupt the very start of that process? Could we bend the curve on uh, the time and the quality of discovering new drugs and then hopefully impacting the whole that downstream process. So Helen, I think the challenge was it takes 36 months at the moment to, to typically uh, to discover new drugs uh, within the market. And really we were looking at how could we just disrupt that down to less than 12 months. So can you just talk about the approach that you and the team have taken uh, from a technology perspective and also the process that, 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 that you took to uh, address that challenge? Yeah, absolutely. So we use the quantum inspired optimization services approach. Um, that's based on our quantum inspired digital annealer technology. Um, the digital annealer is a really exciting piece of silicon hardware. It's just a chip, but it's capable of solving problems known as combinatorial optimization problems really, really quickly. Um, solving really huge problems, which means that we can have a really massive impact. Um, our approach to the drug discovery market was how do we phrase initial drug discovery as a combinatorial optimization problem? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It, it, it does make sense. And um, I suppose um, you know, when we talk to customers and, and talk to people you know, within industry, um, you've got the computational chemists, you've got the data scientists. But I, I suppose, you know, I think we've had a good chat about how could we perhaps simplify what we're doing, you know, uh, and provide a bit of a simpler overview. And I think the best way that I've seen it happen, you, you've talked me through uh, the, the approach you've got in front of you. Could you, could you just share that Yeah, absolutely. So if we start off with a disease, um, a pathogen, imagine this toy sorter is the pathogen and it's made up of fats and proteins and we target one protein that we know is key to its survival so whether it's dangerous to the human body or it's destructive or it causes reproduction of the pathogen we target that one protein for example this flowerish shape one here and then we look at okay what in that shape can the da match so we we describe the problem such as the, the shape, um, the binding properties of that flower, um, and the synthesizability of the molecules. And we build a large library of molecules, um, about 10 billion up to a trillion molecules that we think potentially could bind with parts of that binding pocket. And imagine this toy here is, is, is one of those molecules and the DA figures out whether or not one of the trillion will fit through the hole. Wow. And it does that so quickly. It takes a process that normally takes months or even years of sorting through various molecules and it finds it within 10 minutes. So thanks, Helen. And uh, I suppose the key question here really is how have we applied that approach and the methodology and the technology we've spoken earlier to the COVID-19 and the dengue fever projects, you know. So you've you've been running those projects, you've been leading those projects. Um, so can you just talk us through how those projects have worked uh, with those methodologies? Yeah, absolutely. So for dengue fever and COVID, we've worked with a partner, Polaris QB, who are a biotech based in America. Um, for dengue fever was our initial pilot, and we started with a library of one billion molecules. Mm -hmm. We ran the DA, just as I've described, and out popped about 5,000 molecules. I think it's three to 5,000. 
We then passed that over to Polaris QB. They ran their machine learning, which predicts the ADMET properties of those molecules we handed over, which predicts the toxicity of those molecules, whether they're likely to be harmful to humans. And then they took the best of those molecules and ran QMMM software on it, which is quantum mechanics and molecular mechanics um, simulations. And they ran that cycle twice um, to predict the binding affinities of those molecules to the target protein. And out of that, we've got about 20 molecules, which we think are going to be a really good fit, have a really good chance of being effective um, at tackling dengue fever. We've also applied this approach to COVID, but we haven't quite gotten as far yet, um, just because dengue was started first. Yeah, and uh, I, I do remember the excitement when we moved from 1 billion molecules with dengue fever to 10 billion molecules for COVID, you yeah. know, so really, really sort of road testing uh, some of our technology. So we've talked about um, de novo molecules, new molecules, and, um, you know, the, the, we're doing some really interesting work with King's College London you know, on known molecules for, uh, around COVID-19 for a therapeutic drug. Um, so can, can you just share a bit more information about that project because you, you, you've been involved there? Yeah, absolutely. So with King's College London, we've also been using the DA. Um, and what they wanted to do in response to COVID was look at current drugs which have already passed those clinical trials and that testing, that very elongated phase that takes a lot of time to find drugs potentially that have been used for other purposes that would also have an impact on the COVID-19 disease. Um, so they did this by doing similarity searches. They, they took a drug that they think would bind with COVID due to its impact in SARS, um, which is similar to COVID. And they searched similarities between that um, molecule, which is toxic or didn't pass the preclinical trials with drugs that did pass the preclinical trials to try and find drugs which were capable of working with COVID um, and didn't require further testing. So we could send them out today and hopefully have an impact on the current pandemic. Brilliant. And uh, so if, if I could just put, sort of summarise, so we, we, we had a very clear challenge you know to disrupt the discovery process we defined a, uh, a you know a quantum in inspired optimization services to address it we've delivered open innovation with uh, you know with academia and uh, Polaris QB as a, as a startup biotech how would you summarize from your experience of working on the project uh, those projects um, what makes us different in what we've been doing I mean, the real defining factor is the digital annealer, our quantum inspired technology. Um, it's capable of searching a much larger chemical space. The current um, companies out there are capable of searching a million, maybe 10 million molecules. And that's a lengthy process that takes several months on a supercomputer, for example. Whereas we can search 10 billion up to a trillion molecules in 10 minutes. So we can search a larger chemical space much, much faster. It's bringing us quantum level computing without the quantum engineering. So it's available today. Um, that's a real defining quality. And we do all of that as a service. So, you know, we're taking it from 15 months down to seven weeks. It's a real, mm -hmm. real optimization. Brilliant. And um, so I think if we can draw this to a sort of a close in respect of, you know, we've, I think we, we, we the team are so excited. You know, this is tech for good, you know, really making a big difference to the world. You know, we've uh, deployed some really interesting technologies. And I just really just want to share, you know, we're also applying this to uh, new molecules, to existing uh, known drug libraries. We're also looking at that uh, five-step process I mentioned earlier. How can we also then go and disrupt clinical trials uh, and the testing processes within drug discovery? And equally, you know, we're applying this formula for success, you know, quantum-inspired optimization services approach. We're applying this to manufacturing. We're, we're applying it to space. Uh, and Helen, again, you know, you're leading on a project where we're looking to optimize space debris with, with, with quantum-inspired technology. So, uh, so perhaps on the next uh, talk we have, you can share you know, really the outcomes of, of that project. So Helen, thank you for your time today. And uh, that concludes our, our conversation about drug discovery. Um, if you really want to talk about um, quantum-inspired optimization services, 
please connect with us, please contact us. We're really keen to co-create and work through uh, some of society's biggest challenges. So please visit our website. Thank you.